Speaking your bow is to spread the light of Jesus Christ. Voice of heaven, seeking word of God. Speaking your goal is to spread the light of Jesus Christ. Living in endurance, in hope and obedience, like a watchful soldier and a rock of faith. Living in endurance, in hope and obedience, like a watchful soldier and a rock of faith. Voice of heaven, seeking word of God, speaking your goal is to spread the light of Jesus Christ. Voice of heaven, seeking word of God, speaking goal is to spread. The light of Jesus Christ, saving those in darkness, leading to repentance. Christ, you fulfill, His chair gives you guidance. Saving those in darkness, leading to repentance. Christ, you fulfill, His chair gives you guidance. Voice of heaven seeking, where the God speaking, your God is to spread the light of Jesus Christ, voice of heaven seeking, speaking your goal is to spread the light of Jesus Christ, why don't hold the glory leaping in the ministry, you only seek to please your master Jesus Christ. Avoiding all the glory, leaping in the ministry, you only seek to please your Master Jesus Christ. Voice of heaven seeking, word of God speak. Goal is to spread the light of Jesus Christ. Voice of heaven seeking, word of God speaking. Your goal is to spread. The light of Jesus Christ. Hello, I'm happy to see you all. Um, allow me to give you a few points about how to pray or exactly how to listen to God's voice while praying. Not this one. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, you all know that the Lord, when He spoke about Himself being the Good Shepherd, He said that His sheep, 
hear his voice. So one of the characters being children of God that we should discern, we should know how to listen to God's voice. And to, to hear his voice, you need to pray, you need to spend time with the Bible, you need some time meditating or thinking in the word of God. So how to enjoy praying? Many of us just pray because it's time of prayer. We have to pray. But you know, prayer um, is joyful prayer should be a loving practice. You love to pray because you speak to your beloved God. That's the idea of praying. So first of all, we need to pray with confidence. Before praying, remind yourself that you are speaking to your Father. You're speaking to the one who, is, who really loves you so much. And he is ready to help you in any way. And he cares so much to save you and give you eternal life with him. So this confidence, this trust will make your prayer different. Because some people when they pray, they just speak words. But they never think of someone who is listening, someone there loving them, waiting for their words. So remind yourself, this is my dear father. And he wants to speak back. He wants to tell me something to do. And he is happy spending quality time with me. So when, with, when you think this way, I think your prayer is different. Also, when you pray fervently from your heart, expressing yourself, your needs, your thoughts, and reminding yourself that he is listening, he is here, waiting for you. So there's always a message. And most of the great saints were receiving the messages from God while praying. So in time of the liturgy, in time of Agbeya, when you pray um, any kind of prayer, you are not only speaking words, but also receiving messages. Um, also, God is always listening and he knows quite well the needs. He understands your, your needs and he could feel your feeling. Sometimes we feel like there is no one understand me. There is no one feel my feeling. I'm very down. I feel like lonely. I'm not happy. Um, I have done bad things. I feel guilty. Whatever the feeling, you may not even speak this to anyone, to your parent, your friend, but put in mind that God is there listening and feeling all the feeling. Remind yourself also that while praying, maybe the world will not change much, but you are in a changing atmosphere. The saints always speak about the power of praying of changing yourself, your mind, your mindset. So when you pray, it's the time of you to be transformed in the likeness of God, to be transformed in the mission you are, you know, entitled to have in your life. So while praying, there is kind of change happening. So you, we need to believe in the power of praying. The second point, when you pray, better not to expect special or specific messages or expectations. You need not to expect a revelation or a miracle to happen or a special message. You just be yourself and speak your heart. And do not, you know, make it like a philosophy, speak something like you are presenting a lecture before the eyes of many people. No, for God, you need to express yourself and your way in your words. Uh, one of the saints said that God is very simple and he loves so much the simple people and the simple words and the simple expressions of whatever inside your heart. 
Also, when you pray, try to be humble because the humble-hearted, their prayers are always strong. And the reward for the prayers of the humble-hearted are always there. Um, you may know that being humble, it's not, it's not like being um, inferior or feeling low self-esteem. And also, it's very far from feeling being proud of yourself. It's in the middle. You know yourself. You know you are weak. You know you need God. You need his help. And you confess your sin. You admit that you are, you did not do um, many good things. So while confessing, admitting your weakness, this is the time of change. This is the time of the grace of God to change your heart. So try not to focus on your weakness much or to focus on being good much. Focus on God himself. He is the good one. And he loves you so much. He cares so much. So sometimes people, when they pray, they focus on themselves. And that's why some of them may finish the prayer feeling like I didn't enjoy praying. But if you pray and focus on God, you will feel the difference. Um, it's always important in our prayers to admit our failures, our weaknesses, and sometimes even our doubts, our uncertainties. And if you are humble in your heart, you will thank God easily. You will be grateful. You will remind yourself with the many blessings in your day, in your life. And this adds to the power of praying. That's why our church taught us that when you stop praying, you have to pray the prayer of thanking God, praying God first. And then presenting your sinful um, attitude. You are telling yourself and God that have mercy upon me on the sinner. Then you speak whatever you want. Another important point in the good prayer is that when you pray, try to focus on his will, seeking his will. Um, when we start praying, we are like children saying, خلي بالك من بابا وماما, take care of my dad and my mom and uh, let the school. But after, you know, some kind of maturation, when you grow in spirit, you will pray asking God for the spiritual things. I need to be wise. I need to be humble. Give me the purity in my heart. Help me to love everyone. Help me to solve the problems. I need to have a mission in, your, in my life. I need to understand your will in my life. So when you speak in a spiritual way, this prayer is different and you will enjoy it more and you will see the blessings and the you know, reward of this prayer. Try not to ask for things that are not according to his will. Some people may pray just to make money. Some people may pray just to pass the exam, which is fine. But you know, we need to pray for more, for more important things to happen. Uh, do not get over-occupied with insistence for worldly matters. Because, you know, everything is given freely from God's hands, and he asked us to focus on, uh, on the request of his kingdom and its righteousness. So when you focus asking God for his kingdom, that's the best quality of prayer you could offer. Also, if you ask for something to happen in this life, and because we cannot know exactly the will of God in this life, we all know that the will of God is the salvation of everyone, is to know Christ more and to catch his kingdom. That's the perfect will of God. But for the daily requirement, daily problem, you cannot tell exactly what way God will push me in. So in all this, you may tell, you may pray saying, 
thy will be done. Not my will, but your will. I'm ready for anything. I wish to have this or that, but again, it's your will. I don't want to go my way. I need to go your way. I trust your way more than I trust my mind. So again, if you want to enjoy praying, uh, try to pray with confidence. Try to pray with no specific expectations. Try to pray with humbleness and also seeking his will. To pray fervently, you need to concentrate. You need to pray from your mouth and your heart. And this, you know, it needs so much to, to use your mind. So it, it's kind of mental prayer. You need to understand the, the words of the Psalms you are praying. You need to um, remind yourself with the meaning you are praying with. Because many of us, after you know many prayers, we use just to pray in a very routine way, and we cannot even understand what exactly we are saying in our prayer. But for anyone who concentrates, he usually enjoys praying and he feels the power of the words he is presenting before God. Also, you may know Jesus' prayer. It's one of the best prayers, the easiest, but you know, full of power. When you frequently name Jesus' name, um, my Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me, I'm the sinner, or my Lord Jesus Christ, I love you, my Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. So just naming the name of the Lord many times, all the saints, you know, um, assure us that this will change your heart, will change your mind, will put the peace of heaven inside yourself, will give you wisdom, will solve many problems, will save you from many attacks of the devil. So Jesus' prayer is, is really powerful. And I remember when I was in your age, like 13 or 14 years old, uh, some of the monks taught me how to pray Jesus' prayer. And I tried at that time to spend good time praying Jesus' name, Jesus' prayer. And I think this influenced my character so much. And nowadays, sometimes I feel like like I'm praying this prayer even without concentrating or focusing on the prayer. But I feel always um, safe with the prayer. Um, also, you may speak your words, not only the psalm or the liturgical way, uh, words or the Jesus prayer, but you may speak to God as a friend, as a father. You may complain, you may present your needs, you may speak to him in any way. Some people may tell you that in prayer you need to feel things, emotional, you know, elation or um, feelings. Let me warn you that's not important actually. Because if you feel some kind of the joy of the spirit, that's a gift of God. If you feel like your heart is moving, that's the gift of God. But you need not to focus on this. Focus on, on speaking to God. Because you love your parents, you love your friends. While speaking to them, you are not always speaking, you know, with emotions. So it's not it needed all the time. It comes like a gift from God's side, but you do your part. Emotions might hinder you from hearing God's voice. Some people are always emotionally directed. So they tell themselves that in this prayer, God told me this or that, and actually they want this or that, their heart, their way. So they are deceiving themselves. Uh, beware of boosting and faking your words and feelings. In prayer, we are praying to God and we are his born servants. We feel like we are not worthy to speak before God. So uh, 
avoid having the feeling of I became a saint, now I speak to God, I can move mountains, and you cannot move your chair. So better to have this humility in your heart. In order to enjoy prayer, better to have the quality quiet time. Because praying in quietness is important. Sometimes with the corruption of loud, loud voices and um, this stuff will never help you to focus and feel the prayer. Another important point in enjoying praying that you always ask God, what do you want me to do? Help me to understand your will in my life. I want your guidance. I don't want myself to direct my way. I need yours. So it's important not to give God some special things to do. Some people, when they pray, they want God just to obey them. That's the idea of praying. And they are angry because God is not always obeying the word. So as if they are gods now. No, actually, when you pray, you present your life and you are spending good time with the beloved Christ and definitely you are filled with the Holy Spirit but not necessarily God will exactly do what you ask for. Sometimes there is a choice that you do not know and you never th thought of. So simply um, just surrender. Deal quietly with the closed doors. Sometimes you feel like all doors are closed and there is no place to choose many things. And you feel like many frustrations are coming from many sides. At that time, just go to God and present your feelings, your uh, frustration, and, you know, stay quiet because God will open some door. And maybe that's the best thing may happen in your life. Um, when you pray also beware of imitating others do not just imitate anyone be yourself be yourself the way you like to speak the ideas in your mind the feelings you have uh, because there is a special message for you and a special mission for you in life so you need not to just do like others or pray like them the exact words. Um, so these were like few points related to how to pray and how to enjoy praying. Do you have any question related to prayer? Go ahead, Habib. Simply, it's, he's asking, how do I know that God is listening to me while praying? Simply because he promised. That's the faith. You believe in him and you believe in his love. And he promised that you ask and I will reply. So according to his promise, he's always listening. In one of the Psalms, David said, there is no word in my mouth you never focused upon. So he felt like all words were received by God. Do you have other questions related to praying? What happened to Caiaphas, Caiaphas after death and resurrection of Christ? Did he believe? No. No, all these, um, the elders of the old, the the synagogue, after they got rid of the Lord in their imagination, they thought that they crucified him. And the message came after less than 48 hours 
that Christ is risen, they tried by all means to deceive people and tell them that the apostles, you know, took his body. And that's the way they covered the truth in their belief. But according to the uh, old tra tradition, the, most of the synagogue people did not believe in him. Only Nicodemus and uh, Joseph, um, Yusuf al-Rami. These were two of the 70 synagogue people. They believed in Christ. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Please explain. And the fathers of the church said, when the Holy Spirit used the word, God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Um, it, it, this does not mean that God is hardening, really, the hearts of people, because in this case, God is bad. God is doing bad thing. But when you study the whole story, Pharaoh of Egypt had a, a, a hard, stony heart. And he rejected the truth many times. He could see miracles and he ignored the hand of God. And he, you know, tried so much to attack the name of the Lord of Moses. So by doing these many bad things, God just left him to his bad way. And that's the meaning of he hardened his heart. So he left him to his heart. That's simply the meaning. His heart was always against the truth, against God. And after many trials, God let him his way, left him to do whatever he loves. And by this, he uh, was condemned. What was the motive for people on earth? Who knew God maybe didn't believe in the prophecy that prophets told them of the coming Messiah. What was their Old Testament, the people of the Old Testament, simply they believed that there is God, God created them, God ordered them with the commandments, they tried to please God, so they had in their hearts the idea of life after death, but it was not very clear like in the New Testament. So all the good men of the Old Testament were waiting for the Messiah to come, to give them a new life. Abraham, Isaac, uh, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David, all the prophets, these good people were waiting for the Messiah to come. But they couldn't understand the full picture of incarnation, of crucifixion, of the resurrection, of the promises of the kingdom of heaven. The, the, the full picture is there in the New Testament, but it was not as clear as this in the Old Testament. But according to the words of the Bible, they died in hope. And what's hope here? Simply, they believe that when they die, there should be another life. And Christ, the Messiah, will come to them in Hades to save them. And that's exactly what happened after crucifixion. How do I know what God wants to tell me? How do I hear his message if he doesn't speak to me with words? It's very hard. Simply, you will be pushed, not only by words or revelations or dreams or, or angels, but you are pushed to do the will of God. If you have a problem, you will be pushed to pray, and this is the will of God. You will be pushed to love the enemy. You are pushed to give more of your time, of your money, of, 
whatever. So um, simply, when you ask God for his will, you want to do his will, you may not listen to heavenly words, but you are pushed by the Holy Spirit to do his will. So simply the guidance of God is coming, is coming like kind of, you know, moving you forward in the way, in the right way. So sometimes you, you may receive very clear messages, like some of the verses of the Bible speak to your heart, and it applies on this occasion uh, perfectly. Some other times, when you go to your father of confession telling him a story or a problem and, and he will tell you what exactly you should do and you accept it as message from God. This all, according to your heart, will be the, the, the way of God speaking to you because there are many, many different ways. God could speak to everyone in his way, to the very simple people by nature to all people by their conscience from the inside. For the intellectual by science, he may speak to them. For some simple people, they could see visions or dreams or, okay. He could use all ways to speak to his people. I have been praying for humility that God would cleanse me from my pride. How do you think I should approach pride and humility? That's a good one. I'll give you four ways to gain the virtue of humility. Because it's one of the best virtues, Christian virtues or values. Because it's to be Christ-like, you have to be very humble in your heart and uh, this humble heart is exactly the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first way is to spend your day in a thankful, grateful way. You speak always with God words of praising and gratitude. Because when you thank God frequently, you remind yourself that all good things in your life are God's gifts. So you feel like I had done nothing. I'm gifted. Everything were given to me. So by continuous praying and thanking God, this will put the humility in your heart. The second way is repentance. Because by faithful repentance, you are watching the truth, you are focusing on the real truth. I'm a sinner, I'm a bad person, I'm not a good one. I'm less than any of the creatures in this world because they did not break the commandment of the Creator, but I did. So the attitude of repentance always help you to be humble in your heart. For those who stop repenting, they feel like we are not doing any bad thing, we are fine, we are better than others, they go in the pride way. But by repentance, people are getting more humble in their hearts. The third way is obedience. The forefathers of the church focused on obedience and um, as an important way to reach humility. No one can be humble if he always live his life according to his mind, to himself. You need to be um, guided by others. You need to say harder. You need to follow others. Others, God, the man of God, the word of God, church of God. So by obedience, now you are getting more humble in your heart. So the virtue of thanksgiving, the virtue of repentance, the virtue of obedience, submission, 
The last one is the discipleship. When you focus on the life of the Lord, he is the perfect model of the humble-hearted person. You cannot be humble without focusing on the Lord himself. How could he deal with all types of people? How could he endure and tolerate the attacks of the Jewish people? How could he accept living in this poor condition and he never complained? How could his love move him to give all these gifts to everyone and never, you know, um, give him back? So all the life of the Lord, his words and his actions will give you the, the road map of humility. So again, shukr, tawbah, ta'a, talmaza. Thank, being thankful all the time, repentant in your heart, obedient, and also a good disciple to the Lord. Thank you. Just wondering what is your He's asking about the verses in Matthew chapter 25. I was sick and you visited me. I was hungry and you gave me to eat. Do we seek people out to do this? Or do we look for opportunities in our daily lives? I believe we need to, to go out of our ways to seek these poor people, needy people. Because in your country, you may not see many hungry people or many, uh, you know, people in need. But actually, the world is not that big now. And let me tell you that 80% of the population of the world countries are in poverty. So it's easy to, ha to do the will of God by serving in your country or outside your country. And there are many people, you know, in need. Uh, also, the fathers of the church, when they um, commented on this passage, they said that hungry is not only for food, but people are thirsty and feeling the hunger of having love, having knowledge. So you have many chances to give your knowledge, your love, your care to many people. It's not only about food and water. So the chances to serve people are always there. And because of this, thank God, our team in, uh, in St. Mark Church in Heliopolis, we started St. Paul service. We are serving in more than 35 countries helping the poor and the needy, but mainly to, to direct their attention to know Christ. And that's an evangelistic service. But the way to evangelize is to offer love and help to the very poor people living in many African and Asian countries. And they can accept love easily. And after love, they can accept the knowledge of God. Most teenagers in my age are usually tired during mass and sleep. I don't think most of them uh, not focused. Um, if you remind yourself that in the liturgy, on the altar, this is the Lord himself. It's not like um, it's the reality. Christ is there. And if you imagine yourself on the mountain one day when the Lord himself was on earth 
and he was giving the Sermon on the Mountain. Maybe some of the people slept. Maybe some of them, you know, felt like bored. But again, that was God. And that's the reality. And also, remember in the story of the transfiguration, Peter, John, and James slept while the Lord was glorified and Elijah and Moses came and they wake up, you know, seeing the, the glory of the transfiguration. So it's again, that's the weakness of our bodies. But we need to struggle. We need to try to feel the presence of God. We need to respect that Christ offered us his holy body, holy blood. So we need to worship him. And we need to give some, you know, effort and some um, attention uh, in order to enjoy praying. And it comes day after day that you feel different feelings. And you may one day enjoy the long mass. But also, when you focus on the words of the liturgy and the words of the readings, when you study why Abuna is doing this and that, and these meanings will help you to pray better and to accept the, the blessings of the liturgy. How can I express my face when I see something against my belief without getting myself in trouble? That's a good question. Especially nowadays, you have many conflicts in your community, and sometimes you are not allowed to speak the truth, you know, out loud. And because I'm Egyptian, I lived my whole life in Egypt, we had it always, but in a different way, because we were never allowed to speak about the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible, and we always have our limitations and, you know, pressures, so you are coming to the same level of pressures and limitations nowadays in your country, although this country was called a Christian country one day. So we need to have wisdom. And the best way, the easy way to get the wisdom of God is to ask for the wisdom of God. That's a, a promise given in James chapter 1, that for anyone who needs to be wise, he just asks for this. So believe in this request, in this prayer, that Lord, give me wisdom. Because... I'm not ready to answer all questions. And it's not easy to present my face nowadays, especially in the critical points, speaking about gender and, and this stuff. You have to be very careful. So, you know, having this wisdom will let you present your face in a very respectful way and no one can, you know, uh, can get you in trouble. Um, also, speaking about freedom and tolerance, you should think that as far as we respect them, we respect whatever they do, what, we respect whatever they think of their sexes, why don't they respect our our belief. So we ask them for tolerance also, that they should tolerate our belief. That's our belief and that's our freedom. So the respect is mutual. You shouldn't be afraid, scared, but you should also be wise. I think all English questions covered. Do you have any more questions or any comments? Thank you for your time.
ممكن نقول ترتيلة ونصلي The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Thank you, Lord, for considering us our your children, for teaching us how to pray. Please help us to love you more from all our hearts, all our power and mind, 
Help us to love people with your heart and to see everything with your eyes. Help us to live exactly your life, to follow your steps and to enjoy your messages. Open our ears and our hearts to listen carefully to your words and to obey your will. Help us to know exactly what kind of mission we should live for. With the intercession of St. Mary, all the saints accept our prayer when we pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. But deliver us from Christ. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Alhamdulillah, salam, salam, rabbi, akum, ma'akum.